Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tales of Old Tombstone, Episode 3. We're glad you're back, and we hope you'll tell even more of your friends about this wonderful little podcast adventure. We come from Arizona. Now, I'm going to give you a couple questions. Not that you would know the answer, but you'll see where it's going. Uh, we have a bird. Like every state, there's a state bird. What is ours? Well, you're right. Yeah, you knew a cactus wren. That makes sense. And we also have a, a state flower. Well, the saguaro cactus, that classic cactus that you've all seen pictures of and perhaps even enjoyed. But uh, not only is it a beautiful tree, a cactus, it has at times a beautiful blossom. And so that is the state flower. But we also have a state historian. Imagine that. That's right, a real state historian. And you're going to meet him today. But he's not one of those old-fashioned kind of boring facts and figures and dates and dynamics. This man is quite a character, and he tells his story. That's right, his story about history of Arizona. This is going to be quite an adventure. You'll enjoy it. And the program begins right now. As I walked out in the streets of Laredo, as I walked out in Laredo one day, I spied a poor cowboy wrapped up in white linen. Up in white linen and cold as the clay. Oh, be the drum slowly and play the fife lowly. Play the dead marches, you carry me along. Take me to the green valley and lay the sod o'er me, for I'm a young cowboy and know I've done wrong. Welcome to Tales of Old Tombstone with Stuart Rosebrook and my special guest, Bob Bowes Bell. And today we are going to be talking to Marshall Trimble, Mr. Arizona, about Tombstone, his passion for the Old West, and his first trails that led him to the town of Tombstone and his interest in Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, the Clintons, and the Cowboys. Marshall, welcome to the program. How are you today? Uh, Stuart, good to be here. Yeah, good, to, good to be with you. So, Marshall, we've talked a great deal um, and heard many stories about your growing up in Arizona from Tempe to Ash Fork and back down to Phoenix. and But somewhere along the way there, I don't think we've had a chance to talk about your first introduction to Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, and the Cowboys of Cochise County. Tell me a little, tell us a little bit today about how you fell in love with the Old West. I think it, I think it all started, um, about 1948, uh, in Ashwork. Um, the, um, the movie, uh, the John Ford film, uh, the 1946 form, uh, film, um, uh, uh the, uh, the, uh, My Darling Henry, Clementine. Henry, um, Henry Fonda, yeah, yeah, Henry Fonda and My Darling Clementine. And I saw, I must, the, the movie only, the, Movie theater was only open four nights a week, and I think, I think I I, I watched all all the I went in there every night to see that it, that it was on, and and um and I just loved Walter Brennan, his old man Clanton, and I thought Henry Fonda. I still think Henry Fonda uh, is is the best the best Wyatt Earp, um, and the story was not close, what <laughs> not anywhere close. John Ford didn't seem to care. Uh, if he was, I think he was more interested in telling a good story. And, uh, it was kind of interesting because I'd been to Monument Valley and, uh, I thought, uh, but I'd never been to Tombstone. And so, uh, my first impression of, uh, of what Tombstone must have looked like probably had all the beautiful monoliths of, <laughs> of, uh, Monument Valley. But I just, I just loved the film and, and, um, and it, it uh, as I said, it, it didn't really follow the story at all. I don't know. Ford always claimed he got it from um, uh, Wyatt, but I think I think that was just Ford uh, blowing a little smoke. But uh, uh, as he was prone to do, he was a good Irishman, and uh, he loved a good story. 
and that, and he told a good story there. It really was. It really was a good story. But um, um, there was no Clementine, and Doc Holliday was not a medical doctor. He was a, he was a dentist, and Victor Mature, uh, uh, muscle man Victor Mature, did not make uh, um, the very uh, believable tubercular <laughs> Doc Holliday. <laughs> but we loved it anyway. Yeah. And uh, because I think we love John Ford's westerns, um, I, I think I must have seen all of them at one time or another. But that was what that was started, and then and and that was about the time I was I must have been about in the fifth grade. And um, one day the teacher said, uh, uh, "This was in Ash Fork," and said, uh, uh, "Marshall, what?" What, where, what town were you born in? You were born, you're you Arizona native. Where were you born? And I instantly said, Tombstone. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was, I, I even had a bandana tied around my te- neck attending the fifth grade. And I, I had no idea what my destiny was going to become. It was probably at that time, it'd work in the rock quarries of Ash Fork or the Santa Fe Railroad with my dad. But, um, I, I I didn't you know we were and I'll probably be talking about Ash Fork a, a lot later on with uh, other things but that was that was my my world and and then uh, in 1955 I went to um, I attended Arizona Boys State in Flagstaff that that was where juniors in high school were were picked to go uh, and I, I was way out of my I was way out of my element among all those outstanding high school kids from all over the state but um my roommate was from tombstone and i can't remember can't remember his name now but but i thought i finally met somebody from tombstone and he talked a lot about the town you know how small it was and this was in this was 1955 and uh, this is this is when tombstone was just you know hanging on i guess as a small town and it wasn't really uh, it, it wasn't really doing doing a lot with with it uh, you know with with their with their history and their background at least we didn't hear much about it and we 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 were we were isolated and we were really isolated in northern arizona we didn't have television um television came long after we had moved away from ash fork and so we all, all we knew was what we saw in, in in the movies, and that was our link to the outside world. It seemed like because uh, most of the time we didn't even travel any further than our our idea of going to a big city was going to Prescott. H, uh, this is Bob uh, Marsh. Uh, when yeah. did you finally make it to Tombstone for the first time? I did that probably. I arrived in Tombstone for the first time about nineteen. Oh, it was in the, the late 1960s, and um, that's when I had uh, I'd been working as a cowboy in Montana, and I had made up my mind up there uh, in Charlie Russell country and Mile City, Montana, and places like that. I, I had made up my mind I wanted to become a Western historian, and um, all my life had so far been coaching and baseball and and and. Um, uh, stuff like that, and I, and I was kind of a lost soul, um, and uh, had a busted marriage, and um, and uh, uh, you know, I guess you could say a busted life, and uh, so my brother and I took a job punching cows uh, one summer. He was a vet student in Fort Collins, and and um, um, he called me up and said, um, "I got a job. I got a job t- on a cattle drive in Mile City." And um, how would you like to come up and work with me on it? And I said, I'll meet you in Denver. So uh, he picked me up in Denver, and we drove all the way to Mile City, Montana. And I worked this cattle drive with him, and it was about 10 days, I guess. And um, I just fell in love with Western history at that point, and I thought, this is my destiny. And uh, that was 1968, <laughs> and I've never strayed from it since then. And so it was about that time when I got back to uh, Arizona, I started just traveling, and um, uh, every every spare every every spare weekend I had free uh, was off somewhere around Arizona. I hooked I hooked a job teaching uh, American history, and immediately that became a Western history course. 
<laughs> and the meeting, and not long after that, the the, the high school here in Scottsdale, uh, Coronado High, uh, had switched me over to a um, Southwest history teacher. And I created a class called Southwest History and uh, wrote the curriculum. And it was supposed to be just for one class. And I got, uh, you might say, I lured uh, 350 or 60 students to one class. <laughs> and they said, they, at least they made me a Southwest history teacher. <laughs> and things were falling into place faster than I knew what to do because Scottsdale Community College called me um, uh, uh, about the first of, first of 1972 and said, we want you to write a course called Arizona History. And um, and um, I, I said, would I said I'd love it, and uh, and they said you can teach a class. So uh, my first my first semester I had I think like fifteen students. Second student I had uh, second semester I had forty students, and after that I had over a hundred students. And then they gave me two classes, <laughs> and next thing I knew I, t- I was teaching a class in in um, uh, Mesa Community College too, and everything started to fall into place after that. But during that time, I traveled down to Tombstone and um, hung out and hung out in the bars down there and talked to people. Met met a lot of the old timers. This was in the again the late 1960s, and and um, and I just uh, started getting acquainted with people down there and talking the history. Didn't really know much, and then I I met a fellow by the name of um, uh, Boyer. Uh, and uh and he was uh, an author and he kind of took me under his wing and he said uh, uh he, he, he took me all over and i i thought he was the final word uh i thought he was the final word on on tombstone <laughs> little did i know but i'll have to say i glenn, glenn boyer was um was a guy who just um, sort of got me got me going and I thought he, I thought he was the last word in it, and I later found out um, um, uh, there was a lot of malarkey. And <laughs> there's a lot of malarkey yeah. today. Uh, yeah. But I, uh, but he, 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 to me, he was a likable guy. We were both veterans, and so I just kind of, uh, uh, you know, it, it, he took me around to, uh, took me out to the. Uh, uh, to, uh, where Molly Sawyer was shot and by Buckskin Frank Leslie, and he uh, uh, took me around uh, all around Cochise County, where things had happened, and and um, and that was really my first my first uh, uh, experience in Tombstone, uh, and so I started going to um, uh, the, uh, joined up with the Arizona Historical Society and started going to all of these. Conventions and and um, uh, and and I, I joined an outfit called um, um, Oh um, uh, uh, NOLA it National Outlaw Law Lawmen's Association. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The National Lawmen and La- National Outlaw NOLA and WOLA were two or two separate organizations that later later um, later um, band together into today's uh, Wild West History Association. And I became a, I became one of the first officers, uh, in that, uh, board members in that and, and remained on that until just a year ago, um, when I retired after, I don't know how many years, but, um, uh, uh, that, that we had, we had a couple of conventions at that time down in Cochise County and, uh, we stayed in Sierra Vista, but we, we had, um, 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 we, it was mostly around Tombstone. And during those years, I was, uh, starting in 1977, I had created a, a program for my, uh, Maricopa Community Colleges. And, um, we, um, had, it took, a, it was a two weeks in the summertime. And we had mostly school teachers in the class. And, um, uh, one one part of our trip was to take them to, to northern Arizona and Navajo and Hopi country and through that area, and the other half was to go down to southern Arizona. And of course, it was only natural that we go to Cochise County. 
and we stayed at the uh, Copper Queen Hotel for a week, and we branched out from there. And um, uh, and I just I just immersed myself in in uh, in, in Cochise County history. Now, and um, Marshall, I wanted to ask you. <clears throat> uh, I wanted to ask you, Marshall. When you first drove into Tombstone, and you'd grown up in northern Arizona and Ash Fork, and you had a good impression of small town life, and you came down off uh, Interstate 10, I think was probably pretty new at that time, and you drove down to Tombstone. Give us a little snapshot of your first, you know, arrive that what that drive meant to you as you drove off the interstate to to Tombstone, and, and your first impressions of getting out of the car. First going down there, it was, uh, it, it was, it, it was really, it was all new to me. Um, I had never even been to Tucson. Here I was a native, but, uh, uh pretty limited in my, uh, in my travels of Arizona, because we just didn't, we didn't travel much, um, uh, at that time. And, uh, and I, I, I so I was, uh, when I was, when I, I think, I, yeah, I was, I was study a student at ASU. When we went down for a, a, a football game, and I saw Tucson for the first time, and um, I thought, "Man, this is uh, the, the 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 mountains around there." Were, uh, it was just it was just different from what I uh, what I had imagined. And then uh, driving out to Benson, and um, and then at Benson we cut down to to uh, uh, down to Tombstone. And it rolled into this little town and, and I thought, this is it. This is where all this happened. <laughs> and it was like, it was a, it, it, it was a, it, like it did a lot of people. It just really must have, um, uh, you know, this is the real McCoy. This is the real deal. And, and so many of the buildings were still, were still look, they still look the same. And, um, and I, I was, and I, I kind of ignored the tourism, and and uh, it was uh, uh, I would go there so many times, and I sometimes I just stand around. And, and one time, one time I was standing on a street corner there on Allen Street, um, and um, um, uh, a, a fella come up to me with his family, and he said, um, um, "Do you know anything about the history of this place?" And I said. Uh, oh, I'd already written some books, so I said, "Oh yeah, a little bit. What can I tell you?" And um, he said, "Well, um, we're down here. Um, we're down here uh, to um, to see a gunfight, and the next gunfight isn't until forty five minutes from now." And um, he, he, his kids were there, three or four kids with him, and they were all excited, and his wife and and I said, "Well, you know." Um, then, then, then the historian then became out and I said, well, you know, there is a great mining tour here, an underground, there's a mine right underneath the town and, um, they'll take you down there and they've got guys down there who really know their stuff about silver mining and, and, uh, tell you all that stuff. And the guy looked at me and he said, they had mining here in Tombstone. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I thought, oh, uh, yeah. I felt like saying, uh, uh, I felt like saying, <laughs> well, uh, uh, no, they just had gunfights every forty-five minutes here with people. <laughs> you know, Marshall, so, what's so what's so amazing is that um, that thirty seconds, the length of the uh, alleged gunfight at the OK Corral, which didn't happen in the corral, but behind the corral, and uh, it, it's the, it's the economic engine of the town. And you're absolutely right. Here's this mining town, and the tourists come, and they all they want to do is, is see the gunfight. What what a clever way to spin that on his head and said, yeah, no, the the actual engine of the town is these gunfights every every forty five minutes. That's fantastic. I, I got a lot of mileage out of that story later on because, I, but with it, with my college students, of course, they eat that stuff up and yeah. and um, and and I and, and a lot of my college students were were newcomers to Arizona. They were senior adults and so forth too. So uh, uh, 
But I encourage a lot of people to go down there. And I said, hey, you got to, uh, and I said, if you really want to know Tombstone, wait till the tourists leave because about sundown, it gets real quiet in Tombstone and walk the streets and just by yourself. I said, just go walk those streets and you'll feel it. You'll mm-hmm. feel. Yep. You'll feel the ghosts of, of Tombstone of the, People who came here, because everybody who was anybody, just about um, uh, uh, any adventure or games, game gamer, you know, I call them gamers. Uh, Wyatt Earp was a, 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 you know, Doc Holliday and Luke Short and all those guys were, they, uh, uh, Bat Masterson, they, they, they were gamers, um, mm-hmm. uh, and they, uh, and they were a breed. They were they were a breed that was it was, it was a respected profession. And these guys were, um, uh, they, they just were looking for, they, they were, they, they, they were looking for adventure and they were looking for, they, they had to come to places like that. And you could, you would find them in, in Deadwood. Um, you, you'd find them, uh, you, you, they, they, they wound up, you just look, you look at just about every town in the West and they were there at one time or another, uh, whether it would be Kansas or, um, or, uh, or, or, you know, up in the North, even in Alaska. And, uh, these guys, these guys had, had to, there was just something in the, in the, in the breed. And, um, so that was, so, so that was, that was the, and that was the attraction. I just, every time I would go down there, I would go out and take a walk as soon as, as soon as it got quiet. And I'll bet you it's still that way today. Uh, cause this has been a number of years ago, but, uh, it, I bet you uh, that it, it, uh, and I used to tell my, tell my, um, tourists and, and people I was, you know, speaking to audiences I was speaking to, so, um, uh, just go down there and, um, you can enjoy all the little thrills and you, you can go to, you, you, you can go to the, the, the saloons and, and the old historic saloons and, and, um, but, uh, but, Walk it, walk, walk the streets at night. <laughs> One of the funny ones, uh, a fellow named Bob McCubbin and I were uh, out. Uh, we'd we, we were, we'd been down there for uh, one of, uh, for a convention, and um, Bob and I were walking around one night, and it was um, uh, it, it was a TTR they were having there in uh, Tombstone Territorial Roundup, and so it was around Halloween, and so um, um, uh, I, I met up with a girl there who was a um, uh, I, I, I think she was, I don't know what, what they called themselves, but she told, she, they, the, uh, pe- people like to go out and try to take pictures of ghosts. <laughs> it's always been my belief that ghosts were pretty shy. And yeah. if you're coming around with a flash camera, <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you're not going to find a ghost. <laughs> but these people were, these people were, uh, uh, they were in a group and, and so this, this, uh, the guide, uh, this, the, the guide just told Bob and I, I said, you want to come along with us and, and, uh, and watch the people. They're looking for orbs. And I said, what, what's an orb? <laughs> they were talking, they were talking about to see an orb out here. There's an orb or something. And, and, um, um, I'm still not sure what they thought they saw, but they thought they were seeing ghosts and seeing ghosts and things like that. And, um, so the, uh, Bob and I kind of dropped back behind the group and, uh, and just watching quietly, of course, not saying anything, not opinionating, not, not spoiling their fun, just, uh, just like a couple of writers would do. You're just thinking about, uh, you, you just, you're just watching. <laughs> yeah. And she, this, this woman dropped back and, um, and, and I, I, I casually mentioned, I said, uh, I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to, they well, with these flash cameras, they've got a flash in every camera at every building. I think they probably scared the ghosts away. Uh-huh. And, uh, she gave me a big grin, <laughs> a big knowing grin, like, I, I got it, I got it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but those are my favorite, those are my favorite tombstone stories about people like that. And, and, um, and I, I, I met a guy who claimed to be an ancestor of, uh, 
uh, that Luke Short was one of his ancestors, and he was he was about five foot one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how tall Luke Short was, but but if this guy's Luke Short, that was related to Luke Short, and and then we met a lot of uh, met a lot of guys that took up aliases, and uh, they were. Um, you know, they were Will Kane or somebody, the other fellow from High Noon and Gary Cooper's character from High Noon and, and these, the, they, they were there and they were living the life and they were just, they were just loving it. And then I met uh, some of the real old timers that were living on the outskirts of Tombstone that had been there for 50 or 60, 70 years and, um, and, and 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 listen and I just I just would go around and listen to stories from from these guys and and uh, I was getting a good education doing it I just mostly asked questions and and listened. You know, one time, and, uh, Marshall, you and I were down there, and uh, Bob McCubbin was there, and uh, uh, Casey T. Pertiller was there, a lot of uh, the ERP people, and we went out to. Um, uh, Alfreda, which is out in the, the Sulphur Springs Valley, which is where the McClowry Ranch was. And so we were out there. Yep. We stopped on the way back in this. I don't know if you remember this, but we stopped back at a convenience store to go in. And, uh, the, one of the people that was there recognized, I think it was Casey or somebody that had seen him on the Today Show, that kind of a thing, you know, and he goes, so what are you guys, a bunch of historians? And, and I think you said, Yes, you know, like, like, yeah, you got a problem with that? And he says, well, I know the truth about this area, and I'll tell you why I know. And we all said, why is that? And he said, because I knew a local. <laughs> and, it was like, and he's he's saying this to like five of the most astute, you know, wider tombstone historians. And uh, we all just kind of said, well, thank you, sir, for knowing so much. <laughs> so so marshall i as we're talking about spirits and as a historian you've been chasing the story for many years is there a spirit of tombstone a character that you're still chasing um i think um uh, there's always some fascinations you know buckskin frank uh is an is an interesting guy and um and there, there were, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, I have to admit, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp fascinates me still. Um, he's, uh, uh, he's been, he's been studied by so many, so, uh, so many people and, and I've, 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 I didn't know Stuart Lake, but, um, uh, you know, his other biographers and, and, um, uh, and 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 even um, uh, e- even some of them that you know that didn't like him, but um, uh, I've always felt that that um, uh, here was a quiet man really, and and he was a no nonsense man, but I thought um, uh, uh, and he he comes he's 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 comes from he's got good blood he's he's uh, if, uh, you know he he came from. He, he was the real deal. Uh, he'd come west as a young man, um, uh, with his family and, and he had experienced, you know, he, 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 he'd experienced it as a laborer, as a worker. Um, and, and, and he had, but he, but he was, he was, he was really, um, uh, you look at his early life and, 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 um, and he was, you know, he was a fighter, um, um, he, uh, uh, he, but he, I, I think he had a sense of, uh, uh, of, 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 there was a sense of nobleness there that I, I think sometimes people miss. And, um, and, and he, I think he really wanted to do right. He wanted to belong and he wanted respect. And, um, he was in a profession that was, uh, 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 like, like, like I said, he was a gambling man. And, um, but it was, but it was, there was nothing illegal about that. Uh, he was respected. Uh, uh, he, he had a wild side to him. And, uh, in, in short, he was human. <laughs> he, 
<laughs> we all make mistakes when we're young and things we wish we hadn't done. And I think he, I think he had a lot of those, but to me that made him human. And, yeah. um, and he, 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 he was not, he was not a, 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 a little Lord Fauntleroy or some, somebody, some perfect little guy. Uh, and he had, he had flaws. He had his flaws, but that made him, that makes him interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree, and, uh, Marshall, and I think uh, Walter Noble Burns summed it up best uh, very early in the game when he uh, titled his chapter, The Lion of Tombstone. Yeah. And Marshall, I appreciate you being our special guest today on an episode of Tales of Old Tombstone, and we are going to return you to the show here in an upcoming episode where we're going to spend uh, an afternoon talking about Wyatt Earp. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today on this episode of Tales of Old Tombstone. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Well, thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Bob. And, uh, of course, thank you, Marshall. Of course, we'll have you back with more story time on Tales of Old Tombstone. Hey, Tales of Old Tombstone. <laughs> Tales of Old Tombstone. Hey, it comes to you from uh, the uh, White Stallion Ranch in Tucson, Arizona. And so it's brought to you by the uh, True Ranch Connection. And you can check them out. The White Stallion Ranch is one of their flagship ranches in Arizona, but then we go right to Tombstone and the Tombstone Monument Ranch. The TombstoneMonumentRanch.com, they are the ones who uh, sponsor us, and you need to know that if you're looking for one of the ideal, and this is a great time uh, here in the springtime of Arizona, perhaps to uh, book a time for a family adventure, there's lots of things to do. But you can enjoy the wonderful, hey, you get to be a cowboy adventure here in Arizona. So why don't you check it out and why don't you join us? Make your plans for this spring and summer to be right here and see the cactus and see the cactus wren. Maybe even hear some stories from Marshall again. We always enjoy putting in a little bit of old-fashioned cowboy music. That's right, from Tales of Old Tombstone. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Bob. And thank you, Marshall, for your stories. Anybody who thinks history is boring, they haven't met the history storyteller. We're going to have to have you back, and we look forward to that. Again, thank you to Russell True and the outstanding team of cowboys and cowgirls at the White Stallion Ranch and at uh, the Tombstone Monument Ranch. Once again, uh, the TrueRanchConnection.com and TombstoneMonumentRanch.com. There you will find the experience you want, and they'll get the right ranch and the right place and the right space just for you. From Tempe, Arizona, Keith B. Woods of KB Woods PR. Thank you for finding the music and for your help and advocacy. We're grateful for that. From Phoenix, Arizona, the 66 Kid, Dan Harshberger, our podcast logo designer. From Literally, Cary, North Carolina, What It Takes Radio, the guys and gals there who put the whole thing together. And we thank you for tuning in this week. 
We will be back next week from Prescott and Cape Creek, Arizona, with another really episode of Tales of Old Tombstone. Tales of Old Tombstone weekly podcast is brought to you by the 66 Kids, a Quo Vetus Communications production, again, in association with Tombstone Monument Ranch and the True Ranch Collection. Till next time, bye for now. <laughs>